YouTubers to another Boku no Hero Academy episode discussion. In today's episode, we're discussing episode 6, Rage, You Damn Nerd. Now, this episode was more along the lines of a, how do I say, an anticipation episode, because the next episode is the one where all the action's going on. Like, cause all the, the, the last episode and, and half, of, well, yeah, about like half or majority of this episode kind of led, is kind of leading up to like the, the bulk up of, of Ka uh, Katsuki versus Midoriya. Literally, that's gonna be the next episode. But for now, in this episode, it's it's more it's more of the build up, building up information, informational episode right going on, because the it be, uh, first episode, it begins with uh, Katsuki, he attacks actually, excuse me, pardon me, right there, he attacks Izuka right there, and you know, you're here thinking like, holy snap, you know, he, freaking Katsuki's actually attacking him right there in that in front of the whole class, you know, right in front of the the, the teacher Izuka, and you're here thinking like. What the heck? Man, the teachers don't even do nothing about it, but no, actually, Aizu actually stepped in. He stopped in with his own quirk, and that's when they actually uh, finally reveal his quirk. Was, um, he, he, his quirk was erase, and it nullifies all, all the stuff, like I, I previously mentioned in the last episode. It just nullifies uh, anybody's quirk. So that, that way, when um, you know, supervising that little scene, everybody's just looking at him. And it's funny, because when, when they kind of sh uh, showed Aizu's quirk right there, he looked like as if he was going, like, like a shotting gun mode, I swear it, it was so hilarious. Like it, it just all the Naruto references that that they always put it in in this show is so hilarious. And like his eyes glowed red. He, like there was like a, like an aurora coming out. The bandages were, were just like enveloping around Aizuwa. You're just like man, Jesus man. Like straight up Ita straight up Itachi san right there, man, or, or freaking an Uchiha clan at least member right there. But that's not the whole point of the episode because you know. They were just kind of emphasis right there the fact that that's how like the episode begins with um that the Katsuki is trying to he's kind of getting jealous of the fact that Deku is actually leaving him behind as you can clear as you can clearly see Katsuki just doesn't just doesn't he just doesn't give he doesn't give a damn about anything anymore he just he wants to beat him up but he can't do it because you know it's it's like this all this anger and frustration that's just building up inside of him and you're kind of thinking like man what's the deal with him man you do you want him to be you know, like, at the bottom of the t uh, tier of the class, you know? Like, do you want to see yourself always as the number one? It's kind of like a Macho Pride thing going on with Katsuki right there. Because, you know, in reality, K uh, Katsuki, like, his personality has always been an, ex an exploding, uh, outgo, out really outgoing, like, in-your-face kind of attitude. And you, in, th in this episode, it kind of emphasized the fact that, you know, Katsuki is just, he's just, he's just fed up with it. He's fed up with, uh, with Deku. And he just it doesn't want to take it. He doesn't want no more surprises. Cause, you know, in, in his mind, you can kind of clearly see that Deku is kind of. It, this is a, this is a speculation of what Katsuki is probably thinking. Is that from his eye, it kind of makes him look like he's inferior, like he's saying that oh, I'm not sh I'm not gonna fight you because you're not you're not worthy, you know, you, or something like. It's just making him look like he's condescending him in, in a matter of fact, it, it, through Katsuki's eyes. It's just like he's just being condescended, and which I think it's. It's kind of it kind of does look like that in in a, in a sense that you know if someone's condescending you you would be pissed off too you know like, you know why why, are you t why would you be like treating me that way you know like as if I'm like just like someone that's you know that's not standing on your own two feet you know and and that's kind of sense kind of makes sense why Katsuki is kind of angry at Deku right there and you know but it's funny because at the same time Deku is just, he's really just being a, a, a wimp but just because he just basically got his new powers and he's kind of showcasing in front of everybody. It just looks like you know a, a glamorous kind of aspect towards him. It's he's becoming li uh, literally the top of the class in such a success that it's making uh, Katsuki just look like nothing now. Even though Katsuki has like the I would say the strongest attacking quirk, like I would say for uh, for offensive purposes, yes. Out of all the other students, yes, it just looks like he has the, the strongest attacking one. But because of Deku's uh, one for all. You know, it it's kind of making his look like it's it's an inferior quirk right there. Now that's why I feel like that 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 build up in its sense is kind of also leading to the fact that like I feel like uh, later on as the series progresses, I feel like that these two are literally gonna be like the faded uh, Naruto and Sasuke rivals. Like I, I swear, you can you can clearly see that these two are just added at each other. Or I should say, it's more of a one-sided battle. It's just that Katsuki just really hates the Gus. Just pure jealousy, hatred of his succession, and he just just wants just wants him to be 
below him. It's a much of thing, like I said before. But continuing on, the st story kind of continues, like with just a, a little bit of small banter, a little bit now and then. You know, I kind of like the fact that there's a scene where um, uh, Midoriya he actually now makes friends with Ten uh, Tenya and Uraraka, and they're like you know they're not considered friends. But it's funny when uh, what's her face uh, Uraraka comes up and says, "Oh, hello Deku, hello Deku," and it, I kind of found that funny because. Miria even uh, like explains it, he's like you know oh you know uh, how, why are you calling me that you know and, and he explains to her like saying like you know that that's it's actually an insult you know that, that you're you're basically saying because you know that's what Katsuki calls me as as a way of just like down downplaying me and I'm here laughing like oh man <laughs> she didn't know what she was doing but it's kind of cute because she said it in her own way that you know that's not what I'm really trying to say what I'm trying to say is more like you, you're that name Deku kind of sounds more of a, like of you can do it attitude. And, that, and that's what's funny because then <laughs> freaking Midoriya actually then says, Oh, okay, then call me Deku. Call me Deku then. And, you know, Tenya's at the side of the conversation at the same time. And you're here wondering, like, holy snap, you know. You're being, like, you're, you're being really pussy with her. This girl better, this girl better be worth it, man. Like, it's just so funny that, like, Tenya just like, you know, don't give in, man. Just, just. It's, Stick with your own name, man. Have some morals for Pete's sake. You could tell that that's what, that's what was going on to Tanya's mind when he was just here overhearing this conversation with uh Uraraka and Midori right there. It, I I don't know. I, I found that conversation pretty funny. I don't know if any of you guys also got the joke that they kind of referenced right there with the Copernicus Revolution. That that was I kind of find that funny when, when like when he kind of mentions like oh wow this the the author really is kind of throwing out like some like adult I want to say adult comic but like some. Some science, some science jokes right there, you could say, because the Copernicus revolution is basically like the Earth revolving around all the planets and everything being the center, instead of the sun being the center of the universe, and yada yada yada. You guys can all look Google that too if you guys want. But continuing on, you know, then the con episode continues in from where now it's switching into like more of an action paced scene. Like I said, it's all building up. All of this episode is just pure building, like I said before. And from there on, you literally see that. All Might now is is a, is a, one of the also another homeroom teachers that they have in battle tactics and just like you know, be in here in basic hero training and it's funny because it, everybody's all odd at him and then you know like Midoriya's just like you know just doing his own thing and everybody's odd and I believe uh, Tsuya mentions <clears throat> like uh, All Might's costume was from like the like the Silver Age of comics if I remember correctly and that, that's pretty funny right there it's probably like mentioning like you know like in like an American style kind of kind of costume. And like I said, you know, like even the Japanese people are kind of like they 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 notice that too in the in the world right there in itself. Which is I thought that was pretty kind of little, little humor. So look, those little references that they kind of keep queuing in in there, I think that's pretty cute and funny right there. But continuing on, yes, and then I'm sorry, but I forgot to mention that like they actually finally show every hero's like battle suits you could say, and that that was actually pretty intense. That, that's why I was kind of like. I'm, hoping for this episode is how they were going to like play that scene right there when everybody is getting ready to go into the into like all might's like hero training course because what all might does in, in this in this episode is he's basically going to be putting off all the teams it's going to be like a villain and a hero like like teams uh, matchup you know it's like pretending like putting them in like in a real life scenario case right there and that's pretty cool right there in a sense because it's kind of teaching them how to have that villain mentality at the same time but you know, before all that this all that stuff is happening right there, you know, they actually put on their suits before they head into into action. And what's funny is because when everybody came on their suits, it looked like something off of like a like a how do I say like a jackass theme thing going on or like the I don't know if you guys can see Captain America Civil War, like the superhero lineup that they all like that every superhero does. That was so hilarious. Like they, they even put like a like a, a, a little little cool little little rap song right there going on. That was the, when they were walking by, which I, I thought that was pretty cool in a sense. And it's funny because the only one that, like, I, I feel like the only one that, that really stood out in, in a sense to me was uh, was Tenya's. Tenya's costume. Tenya's costume was the only one that stood out to me because of the fact that it actually reminds me of of a Super Sentai costume. And, and you know, you're, you're wondering, like, you know, that's pretty, that's, that's, that's pretty funny, you know, like, out of all, because all the other students' costumes, they're all more like jumpsuits. You know, or their face showing just with like a little mask, you know, like kind of like uh, Americanized. While Tenya's costume, he kind of just, he kind of encloses himself in like a pure, like I would say like armor plated suit. 
you know, and, and the only one that kind of recognized him, I would say, was Miria in, in that little scene. And it's funny because at the same fact that, you know, like Super Sentai is a, is a Japanese is, ja is a Japanese themed superhero uh, series. And I'm like here thinking like, man, like all these little references that they keep putting on is just, like I said, it's just, it's just hilarious the fact that they keep doing that kind of stuff. But and I, like, I like the fact that Tenny's costume is also, is also pretty cool. It kind of focuses on his, since you know how his, his um, quirk is actually engine. The the suit actually helps him like look more realistically, more like a I would say like a like a robot too at the same time. So that that's why I kind of like the fact that it, it kind of goes along with his quirk ability too. Yeah, the engine quirk. I don't know about all you guys, but I thought that that's the only costume that kind of stood out for me. It it goes along with with his quirk too. But Batsuki's uh, I mean Batsuki's Bakugo's costume, eh, kind of reminded me more of um. I would say, like something off of like a Mega Man series. That that's what it kind of reminded me of right there in that, in that sense. Just reminded me of like something off of Mega Man or like he just he, he, like because you know they're trying to he had like two two giant uh, grenade looking like uh, like fixtures you could say on his arms, and you know that that's that's pretty cool in a sense, but just. Like I didn't like the fact that they like they kind of gave him like an like an explosion um like little cap on the back of his head. I didn't really like that. I mean, if if they take that off, it would look better. Like it would look more probably like more villainly look. Like cause that that that's what uh Bakugo's costume literally out of all of them looks looks more like a, a villain costume than a hero costume. Like I said, it like all all their costumes look like a like they they all represent their quirks. And let's not forget. The uh, the guy with the naval laser, holy snap! I swear, I feel like he's the Cyclops of this of that universe. He's the Cy he's the Cyclops, cause, but like a gay Cyclops, cause of the way that he like I said he's kind of like flamboyant at times right there, and it, I find it funny because his costume is like it makes him look like a like he makes him look like a knight. That that that's pretty cool, you know. His costume is pretty cool that like it makes him look a like a little like a little, uh, I would say like a little British knight, but it's just. <laughs> You know, you can't really take him that that as serious, just the way that his personality is. I'm sorry, it's just, you know, he's a force to be reckoned. Don't get me wrong, that, this guy, this guy's a force to be reckoned. He has a laser. Man. Come on, look look at Cyclops in, in the X Men universe. See, you know, he's a force to be reckoned. That's why I said with um, a little more training, I could I could see the that that character becoming like like one one of the top classes. But just because he, I feel like he's more on the comical side. I feel like maybe that's why they're kind of putting him on the side. But Continue on. Then in this episode, also, like I said uh, before, you know, like they said that they uh, all my was splitting them into two teams. You know, you're here wondering like, oh, okay, so who's gonna be the first one up? And yes, it's actually uh, Katsuki teamed up with Uraraka with, against Tenya and I'm sorry, did I say Katsuki? Mi uh, I'm sorry, Midoriya versus uh, Uraraka. That's it. That's it. Third time's a charm, folks. My mistake. Midoriya and Uraraka versus Tenya and Katsuki. There you go. I'm sorry about that, folks. You know, and you're here at the fact that, you know, like, that's a pretty interesting matchup because Tenya and uh, Katsuki's uh, quirks, they're like you know, one, of the, one of the top of the classes versus, you know, Uraraka's, you know, gravity specialization that, like, she has. And I would say, you know, Midoriya's one for all quirk that's an interesting matchup right there in a sense and that, and that's a, and that that could span off for like another two episodes too because if i remember correctly um from reading the manga like you know the the action scenes were pretty intense when you when you're reading it so you know, get, expect a lot of action in the next episode as well also the fact that you know their goal is to i would say retrieve a fake nuclear bomb for their mission so uh, judging at the fact that th these characters are gonna have a hard time as well, because you know Tenya is pretty, he's pretty fast and he's not gonna, he's not gonna let down. So you know for sure that th this, these characters are in for a rough fight. But you gotta remember that this is also like a, a little, they're, they're throwing some comical spoof. So you know, you know for sure that this, uh, this fight is also gonna have a little comical side in, in a sense. But speaking of that, you know, I like the way that they kind of enter that first scene. Right there and then, when uh, I swear when ba uh, Bakugo makes the first move against those two, you literally see that he does a sneak attack, 
And the minute that he does that, I swear, it literally reminds me, I'm telling you, it was like a Mega Man fight. I swear it was a Mega Man fight. Because, you know, you see um, Midoriya's costume, look, he looks like a little bunny, you know, like, he just looks, his costume's like a cute little thing going on right there, you know, it looks like, like little big ears, you know, big giant smile. You know, of course, this, um, Midoriya's costume is supposed to uh, represent, you know, the hero All Might's, you know, costume, you could say, but in like a more comical sense, which is kind of hilarious, because his, his mother made that costume. Which is, which I, I kind of personally find that, like you know that that's that's very sweet, but he said he he likes the fact that it that he, that his mother made it you know that, that's cool in a sense but you know he could have done a little bit better to be honest in my opinion. But continuing on, yeah you know, like I said that this fight was more like a like a Mega Man kind of scene going on because you know, right there and then this is where, Midoriya literally uh, steps up against uh, Bakugo because of the fact that. You know, he's gonna finally show off his skill and say, you know what, like I'm, I'm done, you know, take, take, taking your, your attacks on me, you know. And he actually defends himself and throws Bakugo with a, with a slam, grabs on and slams into the ground. And you're here wondering, like, holy snap, this is intense. Like this episode's getting intense now. And now, now, uh, you know, you can't wait for the next episode right there in itself because of the fact that these two are gonna have a, a faded rival fight, or the, the, the first actual rival fight. Of the whole entire series. You know. But that's it for the episode. Because that's where it kind of leaves off right there in itself. Right there. They, these guys are just going to start squaring off against each other. You know. One on one. Uh, winner take all. And the, by the way. These guys can go all out. Because uh, All my literally specifically said. Don't be afraid to hold back. So that's how you know for sure. This this fight's going to be. For the first. School fight you could say. Right there in the sense. <laughs> but. Let me know in the comments. Of what you guys think. <clears throat> About all the all the costumes that the, the heroes came out, and what was your favorite costume as well? But stay tuned for the next episode, and this is Jazen signing out.